worst episode ever. Hello everyone. Or hello heroes. <laughs> it's me, Cody, and uh this is Comics Down. And I got some cool things I don't know. I wanna show you. Not some older books. When I was a boy. Start off and kind of going over Ninja Elite One, and it doesn't really have I, this. Must have been an indie book that just got put out someplace because it doesn't have like who put it out or anything on here. It must have been out of some random comic shop somewhere, some indie book. But it was pretty. It's a pretty cool book. It's about a uh, an old sh a street rat that gets picked up by a ninja master, uh, saved by her abusive father, and taught the way of the ninja. It's really pretty old black and white art. teaches her how to become a ninja and uh, she someday becomes the master ninja and they battle these you know a totalitarian uh, king she gets put in a dungeon at one point ends up fighting her way out her ninja comrades come to get her them learning, meditating, and learning some ninja moves, kung, kung fu or karate or whatever the hell half that shit is. I don't know. Yeah. It was an interesting, you know, different read for sure it's a cool picture here of her being a female ninja they just had to add the, the skin tight ninja uh, clothes so her tits could be nice and plump the world of Noria. That's a Noria, apparently. They actually drew out a map. And, uh, like some fucking token shit right there. Nin it's like Ninja Lord of the Rings. I don't know. I got found this a long, long time ago. Mysticism and the martial arts. Ninja magic is basically what this is. And Ninja Elite, it's a so so book. But like I said, hell, this is probably the only copy in America. Probably. No telling. It, it does look like it was just a cheapo comic, you know, indie comic book that was sold out of maybe one shop at one point. <laughs> but, I don't know. Next up, I have somebody that you most certainly probably know. And that's Ninjak number two. And I showed this the other day, but I actually had time to read it. And I actually liked it quite a bit. Like I said, I love this cover. It reminds me of that one... Spider-Man cover, you know, where the water's coming down over him. Not the one where he's, like, trapped in the door 
and the water's coming down on him, but they have another one where it's like water coming on him. But it starts off, and this is a, oh, who is it? The writer is Mark Moriarty and Jimmy Palamonte. Is it? Uh, oh, and this is a Joe Casada art, of course. You got metal Joe Casada not too long ago. Eh. But yeah. Beautiful drawing. Like him being like in this car crash and he's coming through the window. Uh, it's awesome looking. It's like so much going on, so much action going on. But apparently like they put like some kind of device in there, it filled the car up with water. And they drowned he drowned him. It's wicked. I've always loved Ninja. Valiant Spider Man. He's this is like the Valiant's equivalent to Spider-Man is their British ninja. But it's always got them Spider-Man looking poses. Ninja and Orion. Oh, that's a cool one. Him coming off that helicopter right down here at the very bottom. And all the... Tactically, I don't know if this super ex extremely long belt would be the best way to go tactically speaking I mean as a ninja do you need six foot of belt behind you do you need a full length of a person of belt like flowing behind you I mean and that can be said with a lot of different superhero costumes like capes capes are a hazard I would imagine capes would be a hazard. <laughs> I like the his drawings of like these freaking exec and nerds and stuff. Like this one is so funny looking to me. <laughs> but you know, basically the storyline is you know this guy has gotten a hold of this. You know they've hacked a satellite and they've sent old Ninjak to try to get it rectified. The CIA is you know. They don't know who Ninjak is. They're trying to figure that out. And the the British equivalent of the CIA, you know, they're letting him go and do his own thing. But they got he's got some really cool art in here, like this right here. Like the henchman's like trying to shoot up this hostage for some dope, some kind of drug or something. And, you know, she's, like, like super dope fiend, sick, and fucking tries to get the needle, and it drops, and I know this thing was made. I knew, I know they had goddamn uh, <laughs> normal syringes when this thing was made, but it's, like, in a glass syringe, and it, like, freaking broke and shattered on the ground. It's crazy. It's, like, some Sherlock Holmes, like, shooting cocaine kind of needle there. The action scenes were actually really cool. Like him whooping these henchmen's asses and stuff. I don't know, I love these old Valiant books. They're not worth shit, man, but man, some of the stuff, like some of the artwork in them is fucking cool as hell. A lot more, you know, as far as, like, the books from the 90s, like, Marvel, of course, but Valiant, to me, was the, you know, second place in, in the 90s, uh, as far as, like, the action-packed kind of comics. You know, and DC had some good books, too. You know, Batman, uh, Terminator, you know, uh, Justice League, uh, international or Europe or whatnot and uh, I love this that's a cool freaking picture you got EXO floating around and no ninja got him dead to rights right there with his katana my katana where's my katana at 
But yeah, it was it. Old Gen 13. But yeah, Ninjak, number two. Very cool book. Highly recommend. You see it in the dollar bin, pick it up. Definitely. Anytime I see any Valiant stuff, I usually pick it up when I'm out and about. Just because, you know, I, I love, you know, I love, uh, uh, Bloodshot, Ninjak, uh, Eternal Warrior, uh, Exo Man of War. I, I, those are like my four favorites from Valiant. Next up, we have the Bushido, the Bushido Blade of Zarihatra Warris. Zet. Zat o Achi Warris. And I don't know, I can't. See. But this is a very interesting book. Yes, he is blind. And he is a Warris. Cuckoo <laughs> Choo Choo, I guess. <laughs> this motherfucker here from uh, Solson Publications, man. He was smoking some shit for sure, man. Big fan of the Beatles, Looney Tunes, Heavy Metal, and Ninjas. <laughs> but it's, you know, I love this page right here. This reminded me of like early Marvel. And who, who's this? John Halowski is the writer. Chuck San Hojeksik. Hojeksik it? Man, god damn, they got some weird fucking names in this world. But he's a penciler. But man, I, I love that opening page. It's very cool. He's all walking peaceful, talking to his spirit bird. You got this dragon slithering around, like a like a dragon snake slithering on a log. There, it's very cool. And see, his sword is that bamboo stick he was holding. But his spirit bird tells him that a girl's washed up on the beach, a human girl. And apparently, this doesn't happen very often because the island he lives on is on the back of a sea turtle, a giant sea turtle. So their island moves around the ocean. So it's a very m mystical place that the gods live on. J Japanese gods, apparently, I don't... Uh, you know, she wakes up, she's startled, blah, blah, blah. He explains himself, hey, I'm blind, no really. Used to be a warrior, yada yada. And one day of knowing him, she puts on a talk about God. The SJWs would have a fucking field day with this shit. Blonde, you know, uh, obviously a a Caucasian female, but she's got her freaking a. Uh, you know, a Japanese uh, geisha dress on here. You know, got her hair all up like a Japanese girl. And, you know, she's looking very provocative. And I don't know, like, why are you trying to, like, be provocative for this warrus guy? It's very odd. And he takes her to see the gods, which are apparently these two snake serpent people. And, uh... They, the serpent people, give her a choice. You know, you can either live your life here or, you know, go home. And she chooses to go home. And they uh, tell uh, Tikiyachi or Zakiyachi <laughs> or whatever the hell his name is to uh, take her home, you know, to help her get there, you know, to sail her back home. And, uh,. The female serpent god gives them a magic pearl to use. And the reason why, like, 
I was saying, like, this has kind of got a touch of, like, heavy metal in it because, like, any chance they get, they kind of, like, try to show her ass off or, you know, look, I mean, out of nowhere, you know, they're sailing back to the house, you know, basically just left port and now she's in a, a bikini, you know, her tits are hanging out and fucking, uh, her dumb ass grabs the pearl and tries to make this trip a little quicker, uh, and calls down a storm on them. But that lets the the villain know where they're at exactly, and apparently there's like this uh, demon god that's been wanting that pearl, and he lives in hell, and this is him, and he's like some badass demon samurai. Apparently, they got internet connection in hell. <laughs> little demon people, little demon bugs walking around. I mean, it's very, it reminds me of some very, you know, like heavy metal ish, you know, kind of art. You know, if you've ever seen like the old show or read the old comics and stuff. Uh,. They eventually, you know, make it back to California. Uh, the, you know, the dad sees that he, she was brought home by walrus, and of course makes the cuckoo kachu joke, which I imagine this that joke was said quite a bit while this was being created, and and the reason I earlier I was saying, you know. Uh, Okay, well, they're in the middle of dinner, and that demon god decides to uh, attack. And he attacks them with, basically, some ninja Donald Ducks. And he calls them demon spawns, but they're all, they're like ninja ducks. And they're attacking the family, and the demon god, you know, he, he uh, kidnaps the family and drags them to hell goes back through the mirror, you know, the mirror dimension there, and, uh, Tsutaki, uh, says, I'm going, if I have to go to hell to get back the lives and property that's been taken, so be it, and I'm actually gonna be trying to track down some more of these, here, I'm gonna try to look them up and try to find some more of this stuff, man, but, I liked this quite a bit. I just, like, the art was fucking phenomenal. You know, and this was made uh, in 86. So, I was one years old when this book came out. But, man. If this wasn't a cool book. And here's the, you know, the cover once again. He's bat. Those are those are the demon duck ninjas that I was talking about, or the hell they call them hell spawns in in the in the book, man. But they look like little ninja daffy ducks, and you know he's slicing them, he's slicing them open and killing them and whatnot. It's, it's pretty freaking cool. Pretty cool. I don't know why I did a thing on ninjas tonight, but uh, I don't know. I just, I was like, hey, you know, I like ninjas. I think other people like ninjas. Let's do some things on ninjas. Plus, ninja is fun to say. But, other than that, I think that's everything. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell. Uh, I don't have a Patreon. Leave a message. So sub. Hit the bell. Leave messages or whatever. I don't care. But I, maybe if you left a message, I would. I don't know. I don't know yet. Uh, I'm just trying to think outside the box, trying to show some things that I think are kind of cool, but 
Once again, I'm Cody. This is Comics Down. Good night, heroes.